Hey everybody, I'm Ebony. This is Ebony's Creativity. Thanks so much for joining me here on my channel. Today's video was inspired by a video that I saw on Pretty Distressed channel here on YouTube. And she was duping the Enchantment Dresser by Anthropology. I really loved the look that she was able to create and also the original dresser by Anthropology. So I decided to attempt to do that here. But I made a big mistake in this video. So you will see that and you will see how that turned out. Thank you so much for watching. Again, please do not forget to subscribe to my channel and let's hop right into the video. Here's today's piece, which I got on Facebook Marketplace for free. As you can see, the corners are a little bit chipped, but overall, there's not too much damage that is apparent. It's not as dirty as some of the things that we get, so I definitely can't complain about that. There is some damage that I did not see until the end that became really apparent after I painted, so you will see that if you stick around to the end. But overall, I think it's a pretty nice dresser in decent condition. It is a Broyhill dresser, so very nice quality. It does have one foot that is broken, so we will go ahead and address that. But inside is clean, as you can see. All the handles are present, which is a beautiful thing. And I think this will be pretty easy flip. So I've been waiting to get something with really flat surfaces so that I can try a creative idea that I saw. So we are going to hop right into the flip now. If you've watched my last couple of videos, you know my niece has expressed an interest in furniture flipping. So I have her here assisting and she is starting out by removing all of the knobs from this dresser and placing them in a plastic bag for storage. Before I decided to go super creative on this piece, I was going to do the top a wood tone and then the bottom just a paint color. But when I decided to go super creative, I just stopped sanding. I don't know what got into my brain, but here's where my mistake came in because we started to clean this off and I totally forgot to scuff sand. But after cleaning while waiting for it to dry, we decided to go ahead and spray paint the handles gold. Me forgetting to scuff sand was a complete mistake and I did not realize it until after I had already done two coats of primer, but I decided to go ahead and continue on for those of you who may make the same mistake or for anybody who is just curious to see if it turns out well like I was. On the second drawer, you can see some of the damage that I was referring to earlier that became apparent once I added some paint to it. My first thought was to sand back the drawer, but when... I looked at it, it was just too thin and I knew that it would cause a bigger problem to try to fix it. So sometimes when you are getting trashed furniture, you just have to kind of go with the flaws and embrace them and carry forward. As I mentioned before, one of the legs was loose, so I popped that off completely and here's how that looked. I took some E6000, which is a very strong adhesive, and I just went ahead and added some of that into the hole. Up next, I applied a trick that I learned from an old handyman where you put two picks, or in this case, a wooden skewer, down into holes where there is a threaded bolt or screw being attached. And that will give the thread something to grasp onto just to help establish a better connection. I'm also using my wooden skewer to push the E6000 all the way to the bottom of the hole because it's really thick. It kind of got stuck on the top. Next, I'm going in with my Gorilla Glue, which is going to be the real hero in this instance. And I'm just going to slather some of that on and try to pop the leg back in. So after I got all my glue in place and my wooden skewer down in the hole, I just screwed this back in place. And then I was able to, after a little bit of a struggle, I was able to put my clamp and clamp it in place. As I said before, I forgot to scuff sand before priming. So I just wanted to do my due diligence to make sure that I still could achieve a sound paint job. So you see me scratching. I'm scratching hard enough that it's actually putting little dents inside of the wood, but it is not removing any primer. So I'm confident that 
the primer will be okay, even though I did not scuff sand. I will not skip scuff sanding in the future. However, for this instance, I felt like I tested it thoroughly and it was going to be okay to proceed. Thank God, because this dresser was too heavy to drag back outside. I got some of this casting resin from Michaels and I am just going to be mixing two parts, parts A and B, into a bowl, stirring that up. And then I'm going to be pouring them into this Prima mold that I got from Amazon. This is about a nine to 10 minute time lapse. I just thought it would be cool to kind of leave this in and show you guys how this turns from clear to white to let you know when it is done molding. I thought it was pretty cool to watch myself. So here's a little bit of footage of that for you in case you're not familiar with the product. So here's how they look when they are dry. They turn pretty hard, but they're still moldable at this point. So you want to go ahead and remove them pretty quickly. They will harden quickly and you want to do them while they're still pliable, particularly if you're going to have areas where they fold around a corner or something like that. I wasn't quite sure if I was going to do my pattern at this point. So my goal was to get them out as quickly as possible without breaking them. So I can kind of try to lay out a pattern and see exactly how it is that I wanted to place them. So that is what you see me doing here, kind of just placing them, figuring out exactly where I want everything. I did not have a particular way in mind to do this. I just kind of went with my instincts. If you are a regular watcher, you know I do that often. I just kind of do what feels good to me when it comes to these flips. So there were some areas where I wanted to put pieces, but the drawer opening was in the way. So I just cut those. And I did use E6000. If you are going to be laying these flat on a surface, the E6000 was not bad. However, if you are going to be trying to put these on a surface that is perpendicular to the floor, the E6000 is not the best adhesive because they will slide around. I can tell you how I know, and that is because that's what I did. And I did have a lot of glue to clean up. So I just want to prevent you from having the same issue that I had. I think the tight bond Three might be a better alternative for this project, but I had E6000, so I just used E6000. So after I started gluing them down, that helped me kind of see a pattern, and I just went with that. Here's some footage of me kind of just placing these down. Then we went back in with a wooden skewer just to clean up some of the E6000 that spilled out. While I was waiting on my next batch of flowers to dry, I went ahead and addressed those chipped out corners with some wood filler. After filling the corners, I just went back in with my E6000 and more of my molds. And I tried to use hot glue, but it just really didn't work out for me. So I had to stick to my E6000 and just kind of allow them to slide. Honestly, I tried to press them in as much as I could. And if I saw them sliding, I tried to push them back in place. But the 6000 did not work because the surface is perpendicular to the floor. And they did slide around some. All in all, I was able to control it, but it was just more trouble than using the right adhesive would have been. Also, you might be wondering why I didn't just make a bunch of these and then glue them all at the same time. That is because, again, they, they only are pliable for a little while. And then after that, and once they harden, they're just a little bit more difficult to deal with. So I wanted to make sure I was dealing with them while they were pliable. So then I clamped everything in place and put weights on the things that I could not clamp and went back in with my sanding sponge to address those corners. And after those were all sanded down, I did go back in with the bend primer and do two coats of primer over all the corners. Up next, I did take a 400 grit sanding sponge and I just kind of went over everything to just clear up all the glue residue, anything that I might have missed, anything that needed to be smoothed out. I wanted to go ahead and address it now. So I did do a little light sanding over the whole piece and then I cleaned that just with some plain water. Going in with my one and only Klingon 045 brush and this fusion paint in Little Well that I had left over from a previous cabinet job. 
and I am going to be misting my piece and I am just going to be hand painting like I always do trying to get paint on the piece in the first coat and then trying to focus more on the strokes and how it actually looks in the second coat. At this point, I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with the flowers, if I was going to go in a different direction or just leave them the same color as the dresser. So I did spend a lot of time making sure that I got into every little crevice around all of the flowers. Here's how this looked after one coat. As you can see, it is kind of splotchy. You can see through it. It looks very thin and the coverage is not complete, but that is okay because I will be doing a second coat. And with fusion paint, a second coat will address all of these issues. I have this white chalk paint on hand. So at this point, I'm still not 100% sure what I wanted to do with these flowers, but I just started painting and most of the time my brush guides me and it did the same thing in this time. So I was going to do kind of a true cherry blossom look with the white flower with the pink inside. But then I decided I don't have to do that. I'm gonna go my own way and just let my paintbrush literally guide me. So I pulled out all the paints that I had on hand and I came up with something that was unique and original to me. Here's two of the paints that I did pull out. I put the green paint on all of the leaves and some of the buds. In this video, I'm definitely trying to use what I have on hand because furniture has not been selling well due to the current state of our economy. So if you are a fellow furniture flipper, I just want to say that this too shall pass and stick in there. Do not start lowering your prices like crazy. Wait it out and get what you deserve for your work. So after I brought these flowers back to white, I went in with the gold because I thought that would be a good nod to the gold on the handles and would tie everything together really well. At this point, I still wasn't sure if I should go gold or kind of do these how they look in nature, but I am just using what I have and going with my instincts. But I am really curious how you guys would have handled these flowers, so leave me a comment down below and let me know. I had some rose gold paint left over from this project, so I decided to use a little bit of that on this as well, just to give a nod to how these are actually pink in color in nature in the center. And I just literally did a really dry brush over all the gold areas. I literally used about half what was just in my lid. It's just a really quick dry brushing, not putting too much effort or thought into it. Just kind of hitting the center of all the flowers with a little bit of this pink, just to give it a little bit of more dimension and color. Up next, I hit the stems with a little bit of brown chalk paint. You can see that got a little bit messy, so I did go back in with more blue paint to clean that up. I also did two coats of polycrylic and satin. I added back in the handles, and while we revisit how this first looked, I just wanted to give everybody who has not yet subscribed a chance to go ahead and click that subscribe button before we hop into the final finished product. Without further ado, here are the final finished images. Thank you so much for watching. Leave me a comment and let me know how you feel this project turned out.
If you have the time, please select another one of my videos to watch from the choices on your screen or in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you guys in my next clip.